Hey there guys, welcome back to yet another episode in the ever-growing travel trailer build series. Today I'm going to update you on the most recent addition I've added to the inside of the trailer, which is the front dinette area. It includes a seating area with a table that folds down or slides down to convert the seating area into a sleeping area. It has a little bit of storage and then some cabinets up above. I really feel like this was the most uh, complex of all the interior projects so far, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. So let me see if I can show you the process I took to make this, and then I will talk about uh, what is to come next in the travel trailer series and uh, when I plan on taking this camping. The beginning of this project was really inspired by this folding cushion that my wife and I found on Amazon. It converts from a seat to a bed and just so happened to be the perfect width for the space that we had available at the front of the trailer. I figured it would also save us a bit of money versus buying custom RV cushions as well as helping the build go a bit easier since it could serve as a seat without having any special structure behind it. But as you will soon find out in just a bit, it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted. Um, but I still wanted to show you the process of the initial build since all the construction techniques are the same as what I ended up changing this out to. They take quite a bit of space here in the back, which pushes me kind of towards the front. Um, so I don't know if I want to continue with these. I kind of wish that it was thinner back here so that I could sit further back and have a little more space from where the table will eventually go right here. Okay, so I've decided to go in a completely different direction than what I originally started with. Here is the original base that I just constructed, but I didn't like the way it paired with the double folded prefab cushion. I felt it kind of took away a lot of storage space underneath the seat as well as pushed me towards the middle of the trailer because of the double folded cushion. So I've decided to have a seamstress take off those top cushions and I'm going to go with a more traditional RV setup. I built these exactly the same way I built those boxes just with pocket holes. They are two by twos but you'll see it has a slightly angled back. And now what I'm gonna do is cover this in some plywood, and then I think I'm gonna leave a little space right there for a pull-out drawer, uh, since this will be the seat that will be right next to the door. All right, at this point I have all of the plywood on and all of the nail holes filled with wood putty and it's pretty much ready for paint. I went ahead and built a little box for the future drawer that's gonna go underneath that uh, part of the dinette seat. And then I also built some little platforms that will eventually go as the bottoms of the seats and they will flip up like I did for the rear uh, bed area where the cooler is stored. So I'm going to go ahead and sand all of this wood putty, paint this, and then I'll go ahead and put those inserts in with the hinges and then go ahead and set this drawer in place too. 
And one quick thing I forgot to mention is that these seat bottoms will rest on these two by twos right here. I added these after I clad this all in plywood and they essentially act just as like a stop. So that's what the seat bottom's resting on and then I'll put some hinges on this so it can flip up. For the flooring of the trailer we decided to go with vinyl plank flooring with adhesive overlaps and I've got to say this is by far the easiest flooring I've ever installed. It went down super quick and easy but I do question the durability a bit as quite a few of the pieces had broken adhesive tabs and weren't able to be used. Uh, luckily Home Depot refunded us for the pieces that were broken um, but I guess only time will tell <laughs> how well this stuff holds up. And for the cabinets, I'm just showing you some old footage from the previous trailer cabinet video because these cabinets were constructed in the exact same manner that those were. The only difference is that they were just installed in the front curve section versus a squared off section like you see here. But everything else is the same, same hardware, same dimensions almost, and uh, there they are. All right, I've got my chairs installed, and here's the mechanism that's going to allow the tabletop to move down into a bed position. It works with a little hydraulic strut, and this back here is a track, and it just slides up and down and can be locked into and out of position. The only problem is, is that uh, this actually extends further out than the tabletop that I have made. So I'm going to have to modify this and come up with a different solution. So here it is with the tabletop and now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about regarding the support arm extending past the edge of the table when it's lowered. And you can see it right there. So I'm going to make some modifications and uh, see what else I can come up with where I can still use this mechanism or at least part of it. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. I got some shelf brackets at Home Depot and they were almost the same color that I painted this mechanism. And I just added those to the top and then I cut off that little piece right there so it won't extend out past. And I think this is going to work pretty well. Um, it obviously has the same function. I'll make some sort of stop up here to keep it down when it's in the bed format. And I'll probably end up putting some sort of leg out here off the table that flips up or folds down uh, just to give it some extra support. And the table mechanism is officially installed after I made the modifications. You'll notice that I also added some washers to the tops of those shelving brackets and that was just to help shim them up a bit since they actually sit a bit lower than the back side of the slider. Um, I also did want to point out that I painted this. It was originally like a cream color um, and uh, now that it's sitting in here it seemed pretty dark. 
so I may eventually paint that white or a lighter shade of gray but for now I'm gonna let it stand uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is make a little aluminum leg right here to give a little bit of extra support to the table and then eventually some sort of locking mechanism And the last thing I did was to install the tabletop, the front support leg, and the stops for which the table would rest on when it's in the bed position. The first thing I'll show you is the front support leg. I made it out of one inch aluminum tubing, and the brackets on each end were made out of inch and a quarter by eighth inch aluminum tubing, and I just cut them into a bracket shape. This top is released with a cotter pen, and the other end mounts to the floor where the leg will hinge on and lay down when it's put in the bed position. Here's a closer look at the stops and in just a second I'll show you how the tabletop rests on them. All right, now that I have everything installed, let me give you a quick walk around just to show you some of the things that I might not have covered during the build portion of the video. Starting out with the cabinets above the dinette, I didn't really show any new footage of building these, and the reason for that is because I built them exactly the same way as I built the upper rear cabinets above the sleeping area, and I have a full dedicated video on that, so if you're interested to see just how I built them, you can check out that video. Moving on up to the front, you'll notice that there is a notch cut out of the back of that seat and that is eventually where the 12 volt and the solar wiring will run from within the seat to up to this cabinet and the cabinet is where all of the 12 volt wiring will eventually be distributed out to the rest of the trailer. You might notice that there's a gap above here, all of the wiring will run through there and then when the ceiling board gets added it will cover up it will actually go above that trim piece and mount to this piece uh, so it'll all be covered up but it will be easily accessible either within the cabinet or by taking the ceiling board off so i can <laughs> do any maintenance or anything like that that i may need to uh one other thing i wanted to point out with the table the table mechanism includes a little a metal bracket here so you can add an additional piece of wood. I didn't show that earlier um, but I may be adding that as a additional piece of trim. I'm just not sure. And then the last thing I wanted to point out is that I finally was able to find some trim that uh, fits in this curved section. It's called Insta Trim. I still need to do some touch-up paint on it but I got it from Amazon and so far it seems like pretty darn good stuff and i think that is about it i think i mentioned earlier i'll probably end up repainting the mechanism uh, to a white or something eventually too okay so now that you've seen how i got to the point it is now i did want to take just a moment to talk about the process and why sometimes it's not such a bad thing to take a few steps backwards or pause on a project in order to move forward. 
Um, obviously, the process took a long time because I changed my plans and abandoned the original design and made the decision to have the cushions converted. Uh, but the end result was that I got something I was way more happy with, um, but also something that was more functional. I liked the look of it better. Uh, the removing of the bottom section of the cushions allowed me to make the uh, seat portions bigger and have a bit more storage. And I think just overall it uh, came together much more seamless. So had I not made that decision, um, I probably could have had this video out three and a half weeks ago, but I really thought it was important uh, to do it right the first time and have something I was happy with and not regretting. Okay, so <laughs> what is next in this project? Next up on the build will probably be the permanent installation of a heavy duty coupler as well as all of the attachments that will need to be welded onto the front of the trailer uh, to accommodate a weight distribution hitch as well as a sway bar setup. I know those are things I should have had installed when it was just a steel frame, but you know, I wasn't thinking about it at the time and now is as good a time as any. Um, after that, I will do the 12 volt setup which will begin in the battery box where I'll set up the battery, the fuse panel, the, uh, the on-off uh, power switch, and then run all of the wires into the trailer, and they will go up into that cabinet above the front dinette and then get distributed out to where I think the lights and power uh, needs will be. And then after that, I will finish out the kitchenette area uh, I think that's, uh, I've got a good plan for that, so hopefully there won't be any hangups there. And then uh, I will probably call the interior good for the first couple of camping trips, and I will go back to the outside of the trailer, uh, do the reskinning to uh, cover up the hail damage, and once everything is all trimmed out there, I will finish it out by adding some solar panels on the top to power the 12 volt setup and then uh, some point after using it for a while I will uh, address the little bathroom or whatever shower bathroom area that we're kind of thinking or trying to devise a plan for on the other side of the trailer. So as always guys I appreciate you watching. Uh, check me out on Instagram if you like this give it a thumbs up and uh, I will see you next time. Hopefully not in two or three weeks. <laughs>